Welcome. Welcome, Dylan, to Expeditionary Mindset. And thanks for, for live broadcasting on Clubhouse. Super cool. Uh, I wonder, Dylan, maybe to get us started, could you give us a sense of, of who you are, your connection to Japan? And then, since we're chatting about Ikigai today, the seminal question, is Ikigai a thing in Japan? Thanks, Rashi, and thanks for having me on today. Uh, I feel honored to be on your program. I came to Japan 27 years ago. I didn't speak any Japanese. I didn't plan to live in Japan. Uh, I was a military pilot, and I expected to go to Europe. This was a stop along the way. And somehow, I started learning Japanese, and I'm still here after 27 years. Amazing. And in your 27 years in Japan, how many times have you heard the term Ikigai mentioned or discussed? <laughs> ikigai. So I think the first time I'd heard of it was 15 years ago. I'd already been in the country uh, uh, more than a decade. And it came up and it was just a, a word I'd never heard. And I asked around, people could tell me it means purpose. Uh, but in 27 years, including that time and including you asking me to do this session, three times total. Amazing. It's, I've definitely heard it more than three times living outside of Japan. So that's fascinating because I, I think so many of us um, who've been surrounded by this idea in business or uh, in our own quest for purpose have heard it framed as a term that came from Japan or a concept that's integral to Japanese culture. So if Ikiga is not a thing in Japan, then how would you characterize um, the concept of purpose in Japanese culture? How do people think about purpose? Are there other terms that come to mind from your experience, Don? So Rush, that, that's a great question. And as I ask, Ikigai is a word that exists. It's in the Japanese lexicon, it exists. I think it's been twisted in the Western world uh, because we're so focused on purpose. What's our purpose? Why are we here? What are we doing? And so this word Ikigai came with this mysticism kind of thing. And, you can attach a lot of things to it. And I think it's a good thing to use that in that terms. But in terms of being in Japan, if you've spent some time here, you know, people marvel at how the trains are always on time, how the, the place is always clean, even though there aren't trash cans. And there's all these things that people marvel about Japan. If I were to put all of that in one bucket and say, why is it so amazing here? It's because of this idea of bi ishiki, or the idea that Things must be beautiful. And I love to read, and I found this book called Bushido, which is the way of the warrior. It's actually written in English by a Japanese man, Mr. Nitobe. He wrote it in 1900, so 120 years ago. And he wrote it as he traveled the world and realized that people didn't understand what it meant to be Japanese. And so he wanted to put the all compassing text together. And there in the middle of the book, as I was flipping through, I found this little phrase. He says, if there is a way to do something, then there must be a best way. And if there's a best way, it should be the most beautiful way. And so if you can find the best and most beautiful way to do it, then that's always the way it should be done. And so the idea of doing things in Japan is not so much for the end result, but for the process of doing it. And if you do it the right way, if you do the calligraphy the right way, if you do karate the right way, the shikata, then the result is going to be what the result is. And if you've done it properly with the right heart, you're gonna have a beautiful result. So oftentimes you'll hear people in Japan asking questions that don't fit the American or Western mindset because they're looking for the way to do things and not the end result, whereas the Western is looking for the end result and not the way to do things. Just get it done. So not to get too meta with you, Dylan, but what's really cool about listening to you speak is that I know our conversation today is the result of a process. And I know that you've taken this process way more seriously than a lot of other people probably would. And so I, I wonder if you can share a few gems from the road that led to this conversation today and anything that you picked up uh, through the adventure of your own exploration of Ikigai and understanding whether this is a thing or not. What a great question. You know, when you asked me two days ago for an interview, I didn't read your text. I'm, I apologize. I got this. I said, yes. And uh, you sent me some things, the link to a video. I'm like, yes, I'll do it. And I said, hey, can we have a pre-interview? Let me know what you're going to talk about. So I already sent it to you, Dylan. And I went, oh, oh. So I looked at it and it said, Iki guys, three questions. And I went, I, I can't answer these questions. These questions make no sense to me. I, 
I've, I've only used Ikigai twice in my life up until your third comment. I've never heard anybody talk about it. And I thought, I'm going to have to tell her I can't do the interview. I, I can't do it. This is not something I can do. So on my way to telling you I can't do it, I thought I'd go into Clubhouse and just ask. Ikigai te nani? And so I had some rooms this morning. And I had joined some other rooms and I threw the question out. And I got back some fascinating answers. The first that I got back from, from folks, I'm getting great folks on Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. The first response was, well, ikigai amaitsukate na. We don't really use the word ikigai very much, but yarigai is something we use, you know, the desire to do something. So ikigai means to live and the desire where yarigai means to do something. So if you have a job and it's something you enjoy doing, yarigai ga aru shigoto, you're excited to go and do it. And along the same lines, you can say hataraki guy. You know, I enjoy this kind of work. I enjoy this work. Hataraki is to work. And through those things, we say, so what is ikigai? What do you really think of as ikigai? And for the most part, so we don't think about it. But wait a minute. When it comes to kids, raising kids is a life work. That is ikigai, making sure they're set up for life. And if you have grandkids, same thing, taking care of them. And when they are finally on their own, you feel like you've done your life's work. That's something that you can put your teeth into and say ikigai. But a job? Why would a job be ikigai? You know, you don't live for work. You, you work so you can live, but that's not your reason for being. I mean, a lot of people say, I, this is my job, but you can change jobs. So what is ikigai? And as we're bouncing this around, and no one really has a good comment. There was a, a lady uh, in one of the rooms, just amazing, Ms. Uh, Nomiya-san. And she says she's on her 21st venture. She's always tried to reinvent herself, come up with new things. And in preparation to act as a maid, to be an actress presenting her time as a maid, she thought she'd go out and get a job as a real maid. And so she went to Duskin. She got three months of learning how to be a maid. And then she got a job in these two tower buildings in Tokyo. Pardon me. And so there's 50 floor, 15 floors in two buildings, and she would clean all the hallways, all the entrances. And she started eight and go to 1 p.m. And she got to meet everybody as they're walking on to work, going to school, and she'd say, oh, hi, was I was And the first few times she said, good morning, nobody responded. And she'd go, oh, this kind of person doesn't want to talk in the morning. Well, these kids, I'll change the way I give my introduction, my greeting, my morning greeting to each person. I will change my tone, I will change the words. To the kids, ohayo, to the adults, ohayo gozaimasu. Ah, ohayo gozaimasu. And so as she changed the way she approached people, they came back with that approach. And she noticed that she started to get more and more polite greetings. And she started realizing that this, her 21st venture, and she's an educated woman now doing this cleaning, something you don't think of as something an educated person would do. And she found that she appreciated, she loved that feedback, that Good morning. She lived for that. That became her ikigai. Not the work. The yari guy to do the work was needed. She needed to have that, I want to do this work for this reason. She had a reason. She did the work. And through doing that work and doing a good job at it, she found her ikigai was the interaction with other people. And the whole room kind of lit up and said, yeah, ikigai is not about me. It's not about the work. It's how we connect with other people. And it's that connection that keeps us going. Oh, wow. Thank you for that. And thank you, Nomi Asan and everybody on Clubhouse who's <laughs> fed into this discussion and um, collective untangling of, of Ikigai. And now I feel like we need a new term, right? But maybe I'll just call it purpose. But um, <laughs> Dylan, one of, I have to say that one of the reasons I really wanted to interview you and get your thoughts on this is that having had very, very few interactions with you on Clubhouse, one thing that comes through is how much value you provide. And I knew that there had to be something behind that, right? Why, why do you do what you do and what drives you? And I wonder if you could, you could share that with us. So oh, I'm not putting you on the spot. I've, since I've been a little kid, I've always liked helping people. It's just my thing. People I don't know. That's just who I am. That's just the way I grew up. And so when I found this clubhouse app, I found it by accident, just like everyone here in Japan, just kind of showed up in the middle of January. Didn't know how to log on. Finally got logged in. Someone let me in. Didn't even know who that was at first. And started just jumping around and listening to conversations all over. 
One of the things I'm passionate about is getting people to speak Japanese fluently. I get so frustrated and people tell me how hard it is because I have been through it for 27 years and I realize, yes, it can be difficult to master, but the actual learning, the basics is really easy. Simple sounds, simple words, simple greet. It's just awesome. And people encourage you to speak. So I wanted to share that because I realized I'm not a teacher, but if I give you the motivation to learn Japanese on your own, if I give you the excitement, you don't need me to learn. You will go off on your own and get this done. If you're excited, if you have yeti guy, nothing I do will stop you. But if you're not excited, if you don't have yeti guy, nothing I do will get you up there. So I do this not for me and not to share and not to be some special. But if something I do can get you excited to go out and do more, then that just makes me feel like I've done something worthwhile. And so here I even got, uh, we have some people here in the room right now listening to us. And I appreciate their support. Because of them, I have rooms. I open up rooms to support them. Uh, I've never had a schedule in life or anything. And now I'm on Clubhouse at a regular time because I know people are waiting for me, counting on me. And so before every room, I spend an hour or more researching, checking, think, making sure my details are correct so that the things I provide are useful. And it is fun. It's a lot of work. Uh, but I couldn't think of another way to do it because people say they appreciate it. And that makes me feel good. Awesome. I definitely appreciate it. Make your <laughs> Thank, name you. Pasta. Thank you so much today, uh, Dylan, for your time and for everything that you do. I wonder, um, for those who are not already connected with you on Clubhouse, how can people find you and get in touch with everything that you're doing, providing? If you want to find me, you can search me by name, but that's hit or miss. If you search about my ID, it's probably easiest. And I'm easily found at Tokyo Dylan. T-O-K-Y-O-D-Y-L-A-N. Tokyo Dylan. I now have an Instagram page and I just created a new web page called Tokyo Dylan.ch, which is not yet built out, but I want to share all of these great things with you. And so I've made places for people to find me. If I can get more people interested in seeing how easy it is to learn Japanese, the more people go out and find ways to make it even better than what I can do. So come on down, help me. I'm looking for people to help me with my Instagram because I'm terrible at keeping that thing up to date. So maybe you come and you listen to my room and you type up a couple notes and you send it out to me and I post it. Collaboration is a great thing. We're all good at some things, we're not too good at everything. The connections fascinate me and I want to keep those growing. There's people here on Clubhouse, oh, the screen's over here as I'm pointing on this side, sorry. And who knows where we're meeting, what we'll make next. But I'm really excited by the opportunity to grow. What a great plan. Thanks for having me today, Russian. Thank you so much, Tokyo Dylan. Thank you. Really appreciate your time today and, and good luck with everything that you're doing. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye.